Hey guys, so I kind of wanted to address my last video because I ended it pretty abruptly. I had like a purpose for this video um, and I don't really remember what it is. What a shock. But uh, a lot has happened since that video. So I'm now living on my own. I have an apartment in a different state, different city obviously, and life is weird <laughs> um i'm in like a completely empty apartment because all of my stuff is in storage and i probably won't get it for like a month and a half and life is very weird but life's good um anyway so in regards to the last video i want to in a way redo my eating disorder story or not redo it but kind of take you back to three years ago so three years ago is when that happened and obviously like i felt so much like loss of trust in myself like that was my biggest thing it was I remember I just kept and I still say it to this day, but it was just like the one person who always has your own back is you. Like you always have your best, oh that nail polish is attractive. You always have your best interests at heart. And sometimes you might go against it, you know, like whatever. But like you always know what's best for you and what's going to work for you. And that, oh, I'm sorry if I'm echoing by the way. Um, but that moment, that day when I woke up and I remember spurts of what happened, but that next morning when I had woken up, it was just like, I can't trust even myself. And <laughs> that's caused a lot of major issues for me in like a lot of ways. And that's when my eating, um, relapsed. So my eating disorder relapsed. I was in recovery for like a while, like probably five years, four or five years. Like I would, I would engage here. No, that's a lie, I guess, actually. Maybe like th three years, but I would still engage every so often, but like more often than not, I was doing good. But anyway, so that day happened and when it happened I went to completely let me see if I can get this order correctly correct I was sleeping non-stop so I wasn't eating at all and then like that lasted for like a week or two and then after that I was I didn't stop eating ever like I just binged and binged and binged like nobody's business, which is also kind of why I'm making this video because I'm trying not to binge right now. But I binged like nothing and I wasn't sleeping either. So I wasn't sleeping and I was binging 24 hours basically of the day. And then I don't think I was, I don't think I was purging. I took like laxatives here and there, um, but that was it. And it wasn't often at all. It was like, I maybe like took like a packet of laxatives so it wasn't a lot not that it's any better but you know what I mean um and then so that was in January and then May came along and it was finals time and that's when my grandpa got sick so in the same year I went through that I don't feel like saying it again because I don't want to get emotional I went through that and then I lost my grandpa and I lost him. Oh my God, I did not lose him that year. I lost him last year, but he, he did go on hospice that year and, um, out of the blue, he was just like perfectly fine. And then he was on hospice <laughs> and that's when, so I put on, I don't even know how much weight I put on and God, I don't know. I want to say like 40, 50 pounds. It's probably like how much I've put on now since October, I put on 40 pounds. Um, and then it went to engaging a little bit in purging. Um, and then I moved away and then that's kind of where the rest of the story goes. 
But basically what happened was, so I had that huge change and I was just trying to like kind of keep my head above water and that was it. And then once my grandpa passed away, and like I said, I think I said, my grandpa was my absolute rock and he was like my pure like joy in my, this world. Like he's just somebody who cannot do anything wrong in my eyes. And when I lost him, it was like, I couldn't keep my head above water anymore and I went wild with binging and purging. Wild. And it was the worst that it's ever been because I never dealt with my grandpa passing away. I never dealt with that what happened that night. I never dealt with like all of the things that like just the normal daily things you have to deal with. I also had like a really horrible experience on one of my externship rotations. Like really horrible I didn't deal with that and there were so many things that I just wasn't dealing with and my grandpa was kind of always the person that can make me smile in spite of all of the bad and he was he was gone and that's what kind of god I'm gonna cry now I like still haven't coped with my grandpa um that's what kind of really set me spiraling and that's kind of my last three years of my eating disorder um and actually even longer because i wish i knew like when's the last time i because before that i didn't do like much at all um my parents know but they pretend that they don't know um I know Anastasia Anonymous asked me that a while ago um they know but they pretend that they don't know or they pretend they're they're very my therapist says this too like they're very into denial and I'm I like that my my eating disorder likes that it's probably not best for my interests but they know and they kind of just I don't understand why there's vomit on the wall like if I didn't clean everything up or I don't understand why it smells like vomit in here or why did my mom ask me one time I don't remember and I was like oh my god how did I catch that like I get so mad at myself sometimes um, so they know but they pretend that they don't know um, and then I'm trying to think of the other questions she asked I've never been inpatient because they're very, my parents are very good at denial, so I almost went inpatient um, recently. It was in the past few months because I had a mental breakdown. <laughs> um, but I wasn't going for the eating disorder, so I was going to go for like whatever the hell was going on in my head. Like I was going for like my just mental illness in general. And my therapist believed if we treated the mental illness that the eating disorder symptoms would, you know, go away with it um because that's kind of how it's always been it's like if I'm not doing well then I'm engaging and then if I'm doing fine I'm okay so she her thing was if we get you to a place where you're feeling good like you probably won't engage you won't feel the need and if you do then you'll have to go there um so no impatient I don't know what else um, so I'll end it here, uh, but I do want to just say, well, of course, <laughs> I always feel like I end things and then I'm like, but let me go on for another tangent for 10 minutes. Um, I am, obviously I'm not like a mental health professional. I'm not anything of substantial measure within the mental health field or eating disorder, mental health, or anything, um, or trauma. But if you need a friend, a friend, I can be a friend to you. And I think eating disorders and sexual abuse victims are both so judged. And there's such a stigma on both of those categories of people. I don't even want to say we're a category of people because that separates us out from other people, but 
and people with eating disorders and people who have gone through trauma such as sexual abuse, I just don't want you ever to feel alone because that loneliness will fucking kill you. And it's hard, you know, misery hard, fucking sucks. And I don't, I can't speak. I can't get my words out. I'm getting like so frustrated right now. Um, it's really hard to go through it alone. And I, when it happened, I didn't have anybody by my side. And that was my own doing. But I didn't. And it made it harder to heal. And it made it harder to process. And it made it harder for me to not place the blame on myself. And, I mean, a stranger telling me it's not my fault probably wouldn't have done anything. But at least I would have had that voice in my head saying that somebody out there thinks it's not my fault. And if I could be that voice for you, please let me be it. Um, again, though, you know, I can only serve as a friend and I can't serve as any professional in any regard. But I'm here if you need a friend. Rain.org or .com. I don't remember. I linked it in my last video. It's a great resource. I've used them quite a lot. And, uh, you know, NEDA is a great resource for um, eating disorders. So know that there are resources out there and there's support out there. And if you are too... No, I'm not going to say that. Anyway. I'm going to go, I'm going to upload this, hopefully it'll upload, I don't know, because I don't have internet, so I'm going to have to be using data, but whatever. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well, though, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Do I have something in my teeth? I do. Oh, pretty. <laughs>